What up, sweet gang? It's your girl Rochelle in the building, and I'm coming to you with another great video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create my Mother's Day flower pot chocolate apple. Here are the supplies, and we're going to get right into it. I have three different shades of fondant, black, red, and green, my black Merkins chocolate melts, my black food coloring, some gold dust, and also I have a Mother's Day heart stamper and a heart cutter, two different molds with the rose and the leaves that I'm going to use, my spatula, my candy stick and straw, a brush and my Granny Smith apple, and you're definitely going to need a rolling pin. And if you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell to let you know your girl row is on. And don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Now let's get into the video. First, we're going to start off with our molding pieces, which is the rose and the leaves. So here I have my fondant. This is a satin ice red fondant and you want to make sure you knead your fondant really smooth before you apply it to your mold so just apply it right into the center just enough fill in that cavity if you need to use your rolling pin you can do so if you have any overage that goes over the outside of the cavity mold just push it in just a little bit or you can squeeze some of that extra fondant off but make sure it's in the cavity well. Then you're gonna flip it over and pop it out. And once you have it out, you have your nice rose fondant piece. Now there are other ways you can get these pieces out. You can put your whole mold in the freezer for about five minutes and then pop it out. That really works well when trying to uh, create your fondant piece. So now I'm getting ready to create my leaves. So taking the mold and choosing whichever leaf you're going to use, which I'm going to use a bigger leaf and then a smaller leaf. This particular mold is a little flat and you don't need to use so much of the fondant and make sure it's in the cavity well so you can get your desired piece that you're looking for. Any extra, peel it off, or you can use your rolling pin and roll it flat and just pinch off that extra fondant and just put it over to the side. But make sure your piece gets the fullness of that cavity so you can get that design that is embedded into this mold. So you wanna pull it back and as you see it's coming out nice and firm and it's, it is it will be a little soft but when you create these pieces create them ahead of time so they can become firm now i'm going to choose a little smaller piece so with this particular design i chose to do some bigger leaves and some smaller leaves as you see here and you want to create at least two to three different pieces and then you can do three rows. And as you see, take your rolling pin and just roll over the surface just to get a smooth back. And then you can just pop it out, peel it out, and you have your piece. Now with this particular design, I want all my pieces to be firm. So they will be sitting out at room temperature and you can just sit them out right onto a nice tray. And here's our rose, nice and beautiful, all ready to sit aside to become firm. So as you see here, here are all my pieces that I chose to use. Now make sure you pre-make th pre these ahead of time so they can become firm and ready to apply to your apple. Now moving to our next piece, which is the mom stamp and the heart cutter. Taking our black fondant 
and you want to knead it till it's smooth and then you want to roll out a nice thick piece you don't want to do a big clunky piece of fondant you want to smooth it out even it out so that you can get this nice stamp impression from this stamper so firmly press and once you have it in rub over the top just a little bit and then take your heart cutter and cut out make sure it's centered and cut out your piece so when you put your heart cutter over this piece you want to press firmly and make sure you shake it back and forth just to be sure you don't have any edges around the heart heart cutter and here you have your heart piece so now I'm going to take this gold dust and I'm going to do a dry brush across my fondant piece. Now this particular piece is, it can either be left undone or you can color it gold, but in my design it's gold. So I'm just dry dusting enough on and this is a non-edible item. This is not um, edible. This is only for decorating purposes only. So what I'm going to do here, you see, we have our piece done. So this is the first coat. I like to coat it this another time for a second time. And with doing so, you can add some vodka, like a small amount of vodka to the gold dust, but make sure you don't over overdo it with the vodka if you choose not to use vodka you can also use lemon extract to get this bright goldness that you see here and just put a nice amount onto your brush you don't need to saturate it because if it's too saturated then your fondant piece will be too soft you want to keep the firmness of your piece and once you apply it just slightly dab and cover it completely and this will be a second coat um, if you choose to do so for this particular piece. But once it's coated with the extra gold, then you just let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it's completely dry before you apply it to your apple. And here you have your finishing piece. Now let's get to melting our chocolate. Here I'm using Merkin's chocolate and I'm going to melt in 30 second intervals in the microwave. And we are gonna get started. So I did two 30 second intervals. The first interval I did for 30 seconds and mixed, and mixed my chocolate. Then I put it back in for another 30 seconds and this is the results from the second interval. And I like to use a glass cup to melt my chocolate. So with a 16 ounce bag, you can add either two tablespoons of Paramount Crystals, which I didn't use in this clip, and I choose not to. I just wanted um, my chocolate to be a little bit more thick. So um, Paramount Crystals are a dry, is an oil chip like flakes that you would use to help thin out your chocolate. So here I'm just mixing until I get my candy melts all melted. And I could put it back in the microwave, but I choose not to do so because the cup is still warm and I'm utilizing the heat from the cup to help melt some of these stubborn melts. And then we're going to color after this. Now, using a candy color, you want to add, this is a 16 ounce bag of chocolate. So you want to add about a tablespoon of coloring to a 16 ounce bag of chocolate, okay? Whatever desired color you use with this particular brand. This is a Chef Masters candy color, and make sure it's a candy color when coloring chocolate. 
And if you want more information on how to melt your chocolate, check out my video in the description box below. But as you see here, it's all melted. Now, once my chocolate is all melted and colored, I like to add it to another bowl, which will help me dip my apple because it'll have more room for me to dip my Granny Smith apple. And we're all set and ready to go. So now let's insert our stick. I'm using a Granny Smith apple. It does not need to be stripped from the wax. So just make sure your apple is clean just by rinsing it and completely dry your apple. Then insert your stick and then your straw and make sure you don't pierce your stick all the way through so that it don't come through the bottom. Shake it a little bit, check the bottom and you're all set and you're ready for dipping. So now we have our chocolate. You want to take your apple and just go right in and do a rotating turn until it's completely covered. And then you want to hold your apple up and just shake off the extra excess. I normally use a rolling pin to tap off the extra chocolate just to help with the process. You see that nice shine is so pretty and it's gonna come out so smooth. And once all the chocolate has drained off, scrape the side of the bowl and then sit it onto your mat or your parchment paper. And here you're gonna see me dip a few more apples. Also a important note, before you dip your apples, let your chocolate sit for five minutes. This will help keep um, your apples so you won't create that elephant skin. So be sure to let it sit for five minutes before you dip. If you do get a puddle, pick up your apple and just move it into another area as you see I did here so that you don't have that saucer um, look at the bottom of your apple. So this is how I prevent that if I do have extra that is pulling down at the bottom of my apple, just pick it up and move it into another area. Aren't they beautiful? Now here is the finished touch. You know, you guys, you love that. I know you guys do. Ain't that pretty? Yes. Now let's start to decorate. So as you see this beautiful flower pot, we're going to make the rim of the pot and what you want to do is roll out your black fondant and you could just take your hand and just glide it right over that little roll that you've created or take both of your hands starting in the center and work your way out so you would roll your hands starting in the center and just motion your hands going outward as you see me doing here this will help stretch your fondant and then it will give you a longer piece to put around the top of your apple. Just constantly roll it back and forth so it can be all even. Nice. So you just take it, put it around the top of your apple to create that rim look. Nice, nice, nice. And you're all set to decorate the rest of your apple.
Now I'm going to use my chocolate as a glue to apply my other pieces. So this will help my rose mold pieces to stick on top of my apple. So just add a little bit to the bottom of your piece and then position it as you like around the pot. You can take some of the leaves, stick it into the chocolate, just the tip of it, and then just apply to the pot, but make sure you hide that end piece that you dipped behind the rose, and then create around as you like. So now I'm going to take um, my extra rose here, add a little bit of chocolate to the bottom, and then I'm just going to position my other rose on the side. So you can take your rose and design it to go around your pot, or you can take three rows and design it right at the front, whatever front of the apple your apple is going to be and then you can decor decorate it out that way and just start adding some of the green leaves right into the empty spaces that you see to fill it up so it can look like a full full flower pot and as you see I put a little chocolate there and I actually put this one on the stick so it can be in between the rows and the stick and just design out as you like. So here I'm just going to add a small amount of chocolate to the back of my heart piece and then just apply it to the front of your apple you want to hold it for a few minutes so that it don't slide down and get away from you once you hold it and it's stuck on there you're good to go and you're all set and there you have your beautiful Mother's Day flower pot All right, you guys, this have been a fun video to make. And this is also one of my greatest creations. I love this particular design. I hope you all love it as well. And if you have enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know how you enjoyed this video. Also, Give me some more ideas on what you would like for me to create and bring to you in the next videos. Happy Mother's Day and enjoy.